Welcome back, everybody, to the Oakland A's franchise on MLB The Show 23. The start of every season comes with some excitement, but I think this year there's a little bit extra as we are trying to turn the corner here in the A's franchise and build upon this starting foundation that's seen us lose 100 games three straight seasons. We were given a very weak team when this series got underway. And now if you check out the top of this roster, almost everybody on the board here was added by us in this series. And we've made our biggest additions just this year with Vladimir Guerrero, Luis Sarais, Mitch Keller, and now patience will be paying off as Joe Michael is close to making his debut. And that's going to be in next episode. But the very first draft pick of this series will be making his debut today. It's Aaron Don playing center field. Well, actually, probably left field here for the Oakland A's. We are going to start debuting the draft picks we've added here in this series. And those are the big two. Those are the two number one picks that we've added to this team and have gotten at least a year of development each. But there are other players that you can probably expect to see. I'm really excited about Henry Vazquez. I've talked about him at length in recent videos because I think he'll be a really good addition to our bullpen at the least. Down at AAA, there are a bunch of players I expect to contribute at some point. And given, you know, certain players have already been sent down this year, I can call them back up without burning up another option. So there will be a lot of players that go up and down throughout the season. But this by far is the most intriguing version of this team that we have put together with impact players at a variety of spots and players that are really going to raise the level of play we're used to in this franchise. At the same time, the team is still very young and we're going to find out exactly what we have in guys like Trey Sweeney this year and Daniel Susak. The bench is made up of young players that will continue to contribute. The defensive specialist in Daryl Ernais, Zach Geloff at 26 years old. I think he's in a spot where he can really take a leap this season. Shea Langoliers? He's had some disappointing play at times in this series, but does offer some pop. And now, coming off the bench, I think offers increased value. And then Josh Baez, a player that I've been very excited about since we traded for him from the St. Louis Cardinals. He's going to get some playing time and contribute against lefties. And as a matter of fact, if we face a lefty here uh, in Tariq Skubal, he might be in the starting lineup right away. The pitching rotation has two new additions this year in Mitch Keller, the veteran, and Joe Michael. I did see some feedback about Paul Blackburn's spot in the rotation coming off a of bad spring training. I think that Ken Waldachuk will likely replace this at some point if Blackburn either struggles or we trade him. And he is on the trade block right now at 32 years old. I'll be listening to offers as they come in, if they come in. But overall... The overall rating, I think I ignore more in this game than any other. After a while, you get an idea of how guys are going to perform. And because the overall formula in this game, I think, is a little bit flawed and where it looks at every rating and doesn't really capture, like, strengths and weaknesses very well. It just jumbles everything into one number, but there's so much more context that goes in. I trust the numbers over overall rating. So we're going to get the season underway today against the Detroit Tigers. And before we do so, just thank you for all the support in this franchise. It's still blown me away. This has been maybe the most successful start to a series I've had in years. The fact that we have still had three really bad years and we're now a few months into this series and... The viewership is still where it is, and just the comment section, the feedback and everything. We've got something special here in the A's franchise, and we haven't even tasted a shred of success. This is the year where I hope we at least get an appetizer. I'm not even asking for a playoff season this year or anything spectacular, but building towards that in a meaningful way is the ultimate goal. And it's time to get underway. 
And for the final season, we will be playing inside of Oakland Coliseum. The A's have called this building home since 1966. Let's play some baseball, everybody. Welcome in to opening day with the Detroit Tigers and our Oakland Athletics. What is in store here in season four? It's time to get the year underway with Michael Soroka making the opening day start for the second straight year. And last season was a really good start to his time in the A's organization. A 2.9 ERA, 145 strikeouts, a 1.2 whip. You know what you're getting with Michael Soroka. Likely six solid innings. And if you can go put up five plus runs, you're more than likely going to win the game. Off we go in season four as he misses down and in to Pedro Duarte, a fourth round pick in 25. So as I do the math here, that means he was drafted last year. And he'll not even play a single minor league game. He is 18 years old at 74 overall in the big league starting lineup. The opening hitter on opening day. Some teams will do that here in the in franchise in the show. Whoa, slider got him out in front there and one and two. Let's see if we can welcome him to the major leagues. Just missed high, apparently. Two and two. Missed inside and the count runs full against the rookie. You're telling me last year he was playing high school ball and now he's facing Michael Soroka on opening day. The 3-2. Pop foul. By the way, it's amazing down below we have all those milestone updates. That's just so cool. Baseball is such a statistical sport and keeping track of all that stuff is a really neat detail. We're going to run back this 3-2 again. Pitch number eight. And he went around. Strike three on Duarte. He battled, though. It wasn't a, a terrible at-bat. Facing Riley Green. He pops it up for Sweeney at short, and he takes care of that. We'll see Sweeney play uh, at short now on a regular basis as opposed to third base last season. And pop foul here out of reach for Gordon. So this is going to be the last year where we have this abnormally large foul ground territory in the Oakland Coliseum. I'll be continuing to give you stadium updates as the season goes on, but the plan is to debut it for season five. I got a lot of design stuff to take care of. And then also I want to be able to uh, test it out a little bit and make sure it plays to uh, my liking. Lifted for Don and left. He comes in and takes care of it as the top half of the first is complete. We'll face the lefty Tariq Skubal here for the Detroit Tigers. 3.8 ERA last season. Strikeouts, uh, you know, only 141 and 200 innings with a 1.18 whip. Solid lefty. And he faces one of our new additions to lead off the year. It's Luis Arise. We wanted to get this offense much better, and we added him and Vladimir Guerrero. We've got our power hitter. And now we've got our singles machine and Arise is five hits off of 1,000. The way he plays sometimes, that's only a day's worth of hitting. And we have a challenge in this opening day start too with so many left-handed bats. We're going to have to be lefty-lefty for majority of the time against Scooble. Up and in, nearly hit him. Two and two to Arise. And that is down the left field line, turning foul and out of reach. So just as we saw a battle from the leadoff man for the Tigers, we will return the favor. Got him with a slider away, strike three. Tyler Soderstrom is the two hitter after a great season last year and he taps it off the mound to short and is gone on one pitch. Signed the eight-year, $64 million extension with us. And then Vladimir Guerrero is going to make about that much over the next three years. We got Vladdy, two homers shy of 200. 35 last year for the Blue Jays. Still can't believe we managed to bring him in without much of a fight in free agency. 
Ooh, out in front of that changeup. He was the home run champion in 21. They're giving us stats from five years in the past now, as we are in this franchise. Jammed to the right side and caught over the shoulder as the inning comes to an end. Not the best debuts here for our uh, new additions, but we'll go top of the second. Anthony Rizzo is a Tiger, which feels uh, exceptionally random. And good change up there from Soroka. Crack to right field and hit a ton. Rizzo sends it out and the Tigers are on the board. 389 to right field and the first run is scored. Yeah, it's going to happen when the fastball just stays up like that. It caught way too much of the plates. Move on to Kerry Carpenter hitting fifth. And now this one's going to find the gap. Baez cannot cut it off, and that'll be extras for Carpenter. And he'll stop at second. little trouble here with this inning as Luis Arias leans back and gets ready for his first at bat. Susak lost it, found it, and taking third is Carpenter. It's the first opening day start for Daniel Susak behind the dish. And now uh, a little trouble run into by Michael Soroka. Hoping to limit this inning. He's behind it. Struck him out. Out number one. Eric Haas will hit. He had 19 homers last season. Hoping for something that holds Carpenter at third base. And it's a 3-0 count now. This is a bit of trouble for Soroka. He gets in the zone at last. Just missed low, and now a uh, man on first. Ooh, I wanted that one. Could have been an 0-2 count. Instead, Susak has to uh, eat this one, and now two in scoring position. That takes away the double play. A good opportunity here for Jace Young. The 2-1 fouled off. You can't always count on the strikeouts with Soroka, but now would be an excellent time to get one. And he does! Up and in with the cutter. Two strikeouts when you need them most. And now we'll take this one any way we can get it. Javi Baez is hitting ninth. That's what it's come to here for the former Cubs star. He's reunited with teammate Anthony Rizzo. And now there's a lot of separation between these two in the batting order. Baez out in front and Soroka a strike away from ending this mess. On the ground, Sweeney at short. Delivers to Soderstrom and it's only one off the Rizzo homer for the Tigers. Nice job limiting that... Inning to just the one. I was going to be okay giving up two. And now we see if we can work some lefty-lefty magic in the second. Gordon softly in the air. Center field. One down. Trey Sweeney's turn. And he had a really good year last season after being traded to us by the Yankees. Excited about the possibilities with him at shortstop and where his bat already is. Defense is, I think, going to be a little hit and miss this year, but has a chance to become really good. Scooble gets ahead 1-2. Just low. I think it's going to be really important in this start to be selective and patient because lefty-lefty is a tough, just a tough proposition to deal with here. And I think we have eight lefties in the lineup, maybe seven. Yeah, it's Susak and Vladdy that are righties. Missed inside, and Sweeney will reach. And it's time for one of the biggest milestones of the series, everybody. Wait, no, he hits seventh. I'm sorry, I'm jumping things a little early here. We got Baez in the batting order. I forgot about him for a moment. Hey, we've got to get some more right-handed, you know, skill in this batting order, don't we? Josh Baez is one of our attempts at finding that. 
Despite being a lefty, I wonder if there might be a chance to run a bit here on Scooble. He throws a lot of off-speed, doesn't throw the fastest. Might have some opportunities to run. Going to hold off here with Sweeney at first base. Three and one. Got to give him something here. And a swing and miss on the changeup. He put it in a tough spot. And now a three and two. On the ground and weakly to second base. Inning over. Duarte hitting again here to lead off the third inning with Soroka now 41 pitches into his outing. The one and two. Struck him out a second time. Could really use a quick inning after that last one already into the 50s now. You know, it's our opening day start. We're hoping for six good innings and two strikes on Hayes. Lined into right. Gordon. Oh, it's off the glove. But he slowed it down. And then Sweeney saves that one. So a hit for the Tigers, and that brings up Rizzo. Oh, my. That should have been a second homer. He hung the change up, but popped up to Aaron Don. And we're going bottom three. The camera's on the right man right now as we finally will see the debut of our first draft pick in the entire series. Not only the first player we drafted, but the first to make their major league debut. Welcome Aaron Don into the starting lineup. Inside ball one. This is always such an exciting moment. I remember debuting David Geronimo in the Rockies franchise. Don cranks one right center field. Sent back in the gap, and it's off the wall. Don, round second, digging for three. Welcome to Oakland with a triple. Aaron Don immediately makes an impact. And he'll get his first baseball with his first major league triple. I didn't think that was going to go, but I was really hoping it would. It's uh, a bit hard to muscle those out to the gap here. You have to have some real strength to do it. Scooble missing up and in. Don turning on it. You know, one thing we want to do this year is improve his hitting against lefties. If he can just get a little bit better in that department, he's going to be able to do anything. Zach Geloff now getting a start. Geloff is our DH right now, but he certainly has a lot to prove if he's going to hold on to even a temporary DH role. He played on the Major League roster for uh, much of last season, and he played all right. Ooh, that's Byam trying to bring home Don. And blocked by the catcher. Geloff with the count full. Struck him out on a changeup away. Little bit early on it. Susak now will try to bring home Don. And that's lined to right field. Base hit. Aaron Don scores, and we're tied at one. How awesome is that, though? First at bat for Aaron Don after two years of waiting, and it's a triple. That was electric. Luis Arise. Second at bat as we turn this lineup over. How about that chant we already got going? The fans are so excited for this era of athletics baseball. Two and one. Missing to arise. Line drive and out at short. Arise hits it hard, but... Two down. Starting to get a little used to the lefty-lefty. At least, like, when we're playing games like this, I get constant reps, so eventually you can get used to something. 3-0 to Tyler Soderstrom, and he's got all the protection you could ever need behind him in the order. Scooble really needs to throw him a strike, if this is the case. High drive, right center field. 
This one's going back, but it's run down. Man, close call there. I thought we had it. But Daniel Susak delivers after the Aaron Don triple. We're all tied up, having an awesome time here on opening day. 55 pitches for Michael Soroka. All right, we're going to deal with a tighter strike zone here, apparently. 2-0 to Carpenter. And that one is just uh, over the plate enough. Missing low, 3-1. and one. Carpenter already reached earlier on a hit. Now, full count. Off speed, got him. It's a change up away. Five strikeouts already from Michael Soroka. I have gotten some feedback on why I always call him Michael. In uh, real life, I read that he prefers now to go by Michael as opposed to Mike. So I just kind of follow that. I, I go back to the, the Carolina franchise. You know, they had a receiver by the name in game of Philly Brown. Uh, after a while, he didn't like going by Philly Brown anymore. and His name was Corey. That's what he wanted. I don't know if I could have changed his name in the game. I never did. But I kept calling him Corey Brown, and people were, like, confused by that. Change up in the dirt. Three and two, Arias. My back hurts watching that. I'm a 30-year-old man. That's down the line, drifting foul. It's only going to get worse from here. My body is breaking down. Three and two. Missed inside. Haas waving wildly. Detroit has been so patient here. They're making Soroka work. Could be a game where we count down the bullpen for uh, a decent length of time. Haas up the middle. Base hit. Two on here in the fourth. Not the cleanest outing here for Michael Soroka as Jace Young will have a chance. He was a first round pick, I believe, in 22 for the Tigers. And he swings and misses at the changeup low. Popped him up. Guerrero for a look. And he has it. Javi Baez had his first at bat come with two on and two down. And we're going to do it all over again. The count is one and two. In the dirt, smothered by Susak. Hoping he can grow defensively this year. Two, two. Way up there, and the count full. Pedro Duarte on deck. I'm thinking we go cutter. Missed inside, and they're loaded up for the rookie. Pedro Duarte. He's got a pair of strikeouts and prefers to work on the outside part of the plate. Line to Sweeney to finish off the top of the fourth. Three left aboard for Detroit, and we'll go bottom four. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. That's lined into center field, and it gets down. That's a lot better than it could have been, though, if you're Tariq Skubal. Now rolled over to first. Great play by Rizzo, starting the double play. We're going to have Soroka open the fifth inning, but I don't know if he's going to go much further at 82 pitches. Third trip through, he's facing the two, three, and four hitters. And we have action now in the A's bullpen. Ken Waldachuk is warming up. They just have a few intriguing left-handed hitters here. I feel like their lefties do a bit more damage than their righties. So we might empty the, uh, the relievers there with the left-handed pitching. One and two to Riley Green. Yeah, he's just been kind of all over the place vertically. He's missed a bunch up here, a bunch down here. Two and two. Lifted and sending Don back and left. He gets to it. Quickly getting ahead of Austin Hayes. Soroka gets him to go around strike three. And now facing Rizzo for a third time. It's our ace. I'm not taking him out. We're going to pitch uh, a little carefully, though. It's past Soderstrom and into right. 
dropping in the change up to Carpenter. If they get a runner in scoring position, I don't know if Soroka's going to continue. Yeah, he's just not quite there today. This is a disappointing outing by his standards. Two and two. Line drive over third. And got to make a decision here. Do you leave him in? Well, who's the next guy? Arias. I'm pretty sure Urias has good uh, numbers and good stuff against lefties. Batting clutch is going to take over. It doesn't really make a big difference right now, righty versus lefty. I'll go one more at bat on Soroka. Please don't let me regret this. I'll take that. Oh, Susak is not even going to make the play on it. As Soroka will throw another wild pitch. And now both runners move up into scoring position. Hit the outside corner. Two of his biggest strikes thrown in this at bat. And now pitch 101. On the ground, it's Sweeney on the backhand. In time. We had a couple dicey situations there with Soroka, but we get out of trouble each time. And now we'll hit in the fourth, or the fifth. This game is cruising along. Josh Baez, 0 for 1. Scoobal, 49 pitches in. He's thrown half of what we've seen from Michael Soroka. Lifted shallow left center field. And the shortstop on a long jog makes the play. What's he got for us this time? Aaron Don up here in the fifth. We got that first hit out of the way. A lot of that pressure's taken off. Oh, I, I really did not want to swing. I barely hit it, man. Oh, good change up or good uh, slider away, that is. We got two and two right now on Don. Line drive over to third and caught. I made a change. Zach Jackson's going to enter instead because the next three hitters all do better against lefties than righties. I'll face uh, the top of the order more so with a lefty. But here is Zach Jackson, first out this year in the bullpen in a make-or-break year. He's dealt with injuries. He's dealt with poor play. But still... We've remained patient. And he falls behind Eric Haas, 3-1. And, and walks the first man he faces in 2026. For Jackson, it all starts off with his fastball. And he uses that to get ahead of Jace Young. Just low. We just haven't thrown the most competitive two-strike pitches. Softly grounded, Sweeney flips it, and Arise makes it a double play. Baez lines it to Arise, and it's a quick inning for Zach Jackson. Scooble, definitely a lot of energy in the tank as Susak pops it up in shallow center. You know, you could argue that I should have played Langoliers in this game over him because of his lefty power. And I might uh, I might adjust the platoon splits to be set up that way. Nice to give your catcher off days to begin with. 3-0 to Luis Arise. Scooble has missed badly all three pitches. He's over for strike one. And walks him. Arise is known for not walking or striking out much. And he's got a walk and a strikeout in this game. Tyler Soderstrom now. Trying to set the table for Vladimir Guerrero. Or he can send it to the gap and do some damage on his own. Extra bases. Arise waved around third. Coming around, he will score. A 2-1 Oakland lead here in the sixth. And that'll bring up Vladimir Guerrero, who can immediately take a stroll on down to first base.
I think we're about to see uh, a lot more intentional walks than we ever have in this series. Gordon's had himself uh, a tough day here. I'm actually debating on uh, a little pinch hit. The issue is just I don't have the right-handed bats. We are so left-handed heavy. And it just doesn't make sense. Count on Gordon is 2-1. and one, Pitch 70. On the ground. And again, an easy double play ball. Man, even uh, Duarte and Green have better splits against lefties. I don't know. I guess I'm going to keep in uh, Zach Jackson a bit longer. I'm going to warm up Jonathan Hernandez at the same time. Actually... I want to warm up Reyes. Duarte fouls off the fastball, and he falls behind one and two. Struck him out. A third strikeout for Duarte. Green lays down a bunt. Wasn't expecting that. And now a line drive that gets speared by Soderstrom. Austin Hayes, I know he can hit lefties pretty well. I guess I need Jackson to go get us a sixth out. Nope. Ball one. This is the last batter he's going to face regardless of what happens, and I kind of want to pitch him a little carefully. Hayes takes low, 3-1. Rizzo on deck, set to face a lefty. And he'll have a man on first when he does so. In comes Ken Waldachuk, specifically to pitch to Anthony Rizzo. Ooh, he chased it. The slider got him reaching out of his own strike two. Two and two. Wow, he just got a piece of a perfect changeup. Struck him out. Ken Waldachuk gets us the all-important final out of the seventh inning. And now we go bottom seven, Eduardo Rodriguez. So now we're going to be facing another lefty. Nothing has changed. Great. And he opens by striking out Trey Sweeney. I was hoping we could get a right-handed pitcher in here, but they know the lineup that we have there today. Rolled over weekly. Don't have to go after that low sinker. I swing too much at low pitches early in the count. I can let that go. Here's Aaron Don, who has a triple and then a hard hit line out. Don softly grounds it to second. Same thing, a 1 1 sinker at the knees. I just got to be okay taking that and hitting with two strikes. All right, we're going to go on to the top of the eighth inning here. And Arias, yeah, you don't want to leave in a lefty to face him. So Waldachuk's going to face Carpenter, and then Alex Reyes is going to come in. Line drive. Sweeney makes the play. Here comes Alex Reyes, a 2.9 ERA last season, and he was rewarded with a two-year contract after getting a lot of interest in free agency. Fouled back at 98, ahead of Luis Urias. Struck him out. Strike one to Eric Haas. Blowing by him with the fastball at 98. One and two. Nice block by Susak. Struck him out. Inning over. Bottom of the eighth inning coming up as we will be warming up Domingo Acevedo here on opening day. Would love to get an insurance run or two. Two strikes on Susak. And now working the count full with our eyes on deck. Got him at the top of the strike zone. Waiting on that first hit with Luis Arise. Two to one, Oakland here with two down. Arise on the ground, hits it right at second base, and he is retired 
And we'll finish the day 0 for 4. Or actually 0 for 3 with a walk. Something like that. Top of the ninth. It's time to put in our closer, Domingo Acevedo. 35 of 41 on save opportunities last season. He's been fantastic. And now we're hoping he gets a lot more chances to save games. Eight, nine, and one batters due up here for Detroit. Young is the batter at strike one. Strike two called at the knees. One and two. Miss slow. Back to the slider and miss down and in. Three and two with Baez on deck. Fouled off by Young. He'll battle. Pitch number eight. Miss low and the tying run is aboard for Detroit. Javi Baez now. Is Javi really going to bunt here? That's what it's come to. And he will bunt into scoring position with Acevedo. Little shovel pass on to first base. And now Pedro Duarte with three strikeouts on the day. Will try to come up with his first big league contribution. And he falls behind 0-2. Change up didn't end up where I'd like it to be. Blasted to center towards Baez who gets to it. Runner will stay put. That is one of the most shallow Perfect swing fly balls I've seen in this game. And that's going to bring up Riley Green. Two down for the Tigers. Strike one on the outside edge. And called ball one. Borderline slider. And missing now with the fastball 2-1. I think the main thing is you don't want to have to face Rizzo again. Tapped it softly. Acevedo, save number one. The A's win on opening day, two to one. A low scoring game, as you tend to see here when everybody's got their ace in play. And Oakland manages to get out of some jams and just get a couple timely hits. We only had four hits in this game. This was not an offensive showcase by any stretch, but you gotta find a way to win these ones. And we had the pitching to do it. Aaron Don delivered a big triple that turns into one of the biggest hits of the day and one of only four for the A's. Daniel Susak drove him in. And Tyler Soderstrom delivered the big double. Today's win is courtesy of some of the youngest players on this team. And that's how it's done on opening day, everybody. One and O. Oh. But hey, we're on to game two, and Mitch Keller makes his A's debut, and I wanted to get a chance to player lock with him. He's one of our newest uh, additions, and it's time to see if he'll make this rotation a bit stronger, if he can make a good difference. So Pedro Duarte will lead off as we get underway all over again. 0 for 5 with three strikeouts on opening day. Duarte lifts it into center field, and that looks to be Bellinger making the play. Big cut there by Riley Green, who also had the 0 for 5 on opening day. And he went around on the sinker as well. Oh, that's so cool down below. Aaron Don, the number two organizational prospect, triples in MLB debut. That's awesome. Strike three. What an ugly at bat for Riley Green. Couple quick strikes now on Austin Hayes. Are you kidding me with that? Struck him out. Can Susak recover? He does just in time. We're going to face the sinker ball pitcher Casey Mize. Now, I might do some hitting after uh, Keller gets pulled. I'll probably play the rest of it unless it's like a, a five-run game or something that isn't close. 
Rizzo the other way, but right at Vladdy. Grounded foul by Kerry Carpenter, and Keller has a two-strike count once again. Delivers the 2-2, two -two and got him around strike three. Line by Urias, and what a grab by Arise. Six good outs for Mitch Keller to open the day. That's defense from Arise I wasn't even counting on. That's just, that's all bonus right there. Gotta love that play. The animations in this game are just so much fun to watch. Like, great defensive plays are always enjoyable. Just a piece of it there from Haas. He falls behind, and this curveball's got all kinds of break. Oh! He didn't go around, apparently. Two and two. Struck him out. Sinker at the knees. Seven up, seven down for Mitch Keller. Jace Young. That goes the other way and nearly, uh, nearly was fair. That's Byam at 96. Keller feels really good right now. Blocked by Susak. And Young staying patient ends up working the count full. And he waves at it for strike three. That was a nice slider. Javi Baez is next. Trying to go the perfect through the first trip. Perfect slider away. Ahead of Baez, one and two. Miss low. Hit in the air, right field, and towards the line. Play is made by Gordon. Three really good innings for Mitch Keller. Waiting for run support to show up, and now it does. Four to nothing. Pedro Duarte leads off the fourth. Jammed into right, and Arise can't get to it. And that's the first hit given up by Mitch Keller, and the first in Pedro Duarte's major league career. So how exactly were our runs scored then? Bellinger gave us a home run. And then Vladimir Guerrero gave us a home run. His first one is hit, unfortunately, simulating. Seth Brown went yard, and then Aaron Don hit another triple. Don already has two triples on the season. It's 4 nothing currently. Oakland leads. Runner goes. Susak comes up firing and never had a chance. And that's to the right side for out number two. Duarte now uh, threatening to score. Uh-oh. Pop foul. Long run. Soderstrom can't get there. Almost got a gift there from Hayes. We're ahead of him now. And he holds back against the curve. Two and two. On the ground, it'll score a run, and Sweeney, not in time. So, Keller gives up his first run here in the fourth inning, and now it's Rizzo, whose numbers last year are a little underwhelming. Had a really good opening day here in Detroit, or with Detroit. He was a 2007 draft pick. Rizzo strikes out. Carpenter waves at the curveball, and he falls behind in a hurry. Hit the other way, and Don right there to secure it. 7-1 to one now. More runs coming in for Oakland. These runs scored on a second Vladimir Guerrero Jr. home run, and then a Cody Bellinger double. Huge offensive showcase now. This was the, the game I was hoping for, honestly, and... Uh, opening day, but I'll take it any way I can get it in this series. Ooh, watch out. It's Eric Haas. 110 off the bat. 
Now, if this does end up being a year where we're having a lot more success, it does make sense then to slow things down, not simulate for weeks at a time, and we'll figure out, you know, what that looks like, strike three on Haas. You know, we've basically been in the same chapter this series until today. And honestly, only time is going to tell if this is even like a new era for us, but... The first three years were kind of all the same, and there wasn't a lot of reason to check out a random series in July as Don's going to fire into second. And uh, the tag moves a runner into scoring position. But I'm excited if there's a lot more to, uh, to do. Now, I don't think it's going to be as many episodes as, like, in my Rockies franchise where, you know... Those years would take a long time and a lot of episodes. It doesn't make a lot of sense to uh, to go that slowly either unless there really are big series going on. But I think I've learned a lot doing this series in particular. Strike three on Baez. Like the Rockies franchise, how many years have I done in that one? Over two years in like real time. It was like five seasons or six seasons. We're already in year four in this series. And I feel like we haven't really missed anything by going at the speed we have around, you know, eight episodes per season. And he does not go here. We're already top of the sixth inning. This game is going by very smoothly for Mitch Keller. Duarte gets jammed and Soderstrom's going to take care of that one. Riley Green lines one up the middle for a base hit. Tapped it softly. Guerrero gets the out at second. And they get the double play. Mitch Keller, six strong innings. And I imagine he'll stay in for the seventh. I want to see this one again because I wasn't sure if we'd get to. That's a beautiful box score, by the way. Clearly out there. And I think out by... I mean, the foot was coming down as that catch was made at first base. Can't be out by a whole lot less. Rizzo hammers one at 102 over our bullpen. Just heard somebody in the stands after a borderline pitch missed. I respectfully disagree, ump. I've never heard that sound bite before. We're around the zone, but can't quite find it right now. Carpenter sends one the other way, dumping it in front of Don. Runners at first and second. Luis Urias will hit, and we'll see if Keller can finish off this seventh. 84 pitches in, and jammed foul. Lifted, and that one was jammed, infield fly. And it looks like Keller's coming out after that one. So Kyle Muller is going to enter in that case, and they at least warmed him up part of the way. Two on, down by seven. A lefty coming in to face Eric Haas is a, a questionable decision. And he sends it out to Gordon, who had a bad first step, but can't get there. Gordon had stretched out to make the catch, and now the Tigers are scrambling Throw coming in, not in time at home. They managed to get everybody moved up, second and third, a run scores. But what happened here in right field? Gordon, first off, his first step was in. So already that's a false step you have to make up for, and let's get a, a better view at it here. So this is where I think the reaction skill comes into play, that first step. And see... Gordon's first step takes him in the wrong direction. And then he's got to get back, and he ends up missing it by maybe that half step he took in. He just didn't make the catch. Gordon's defense is not great. I feel like him playing in the outfield masks that better than being in the infield, but there you get to see that... The deficiencies are kind of there at the same time. He's a good hitter. And that's why he's been uh, 
you know, playing a prominent role on this team for now the third year in a row. 0-2, blocked by Susak. And it's popped up. Guerrero wants this one. Two down. Another RBI chance for Javi Baez. Falling behind 0-2. Struck him out. Muller comes in and gets out of trouble. Just want to see the stat line here. Vladimir Guerrero, two homers and two singles. Are we ever going to face a righty? Joey Wentz is the pitcher. 48th pitch right here. And Wentz makes the play. And Cody Bellinger now is only a triple away from the cycle. Didn't even play on opening day. And having a big game here on day two. Oh, what an ugly swing. No. Oh, he didn't catch it. The at-bat continues. Struck him out. We'll move on to the ninth inning after uh, actually Jax ended up giving a home run. But let's get Jonathan Hernandez in there now to make his debut with us. Five-run game. We can rest guys like Acevedo. Struck him out. And ahead of Eric Haas, so in two. Just inside. Trying to throw a slider that uh, doesn't work for me very often there. Come on! It's a five-run game, man. Hit it softly. Sweeney gets to it. In time! Swing and a miss from Jace Young and down to their last strike. Line drive. Sweeney on the backhand. And the A's take game two. Eight to three. Today they unleash the offense. And win it in a different way with Cody Bellinger and Vladimir Guerrero having big days. And you got an Aaron Don triple in this one as well. An outstanding first two days of the year for our athletics. Today, we focused on the debut of Aaron Don. Next episode, we're going to talk about Joe Michael making his major league debut. But why don't we continue on with Aaron Don's first series here in the big leagues as we get in a little player lock game with him. Facing a righty here, Matt Manning. 2-1 to one Detroit. Don leads off the third here for the A's. That's it pretty softly. And it is laid out for and caught in center. That's unfortunate. We'll try again here in the fifth. And it's still a 2-1 game. Oh, Vladimir Guerrero. He does have 200 home runs now. That's right. He was super close. That's awesome. Aaron Don trying to make it so he doesn't play his first major league game without a triple. We'll see if we can get him three in a row. Two and one. That misses away. Don's been on base a lot. He came into this game hitting 571 in his first two games. And now goes to the opposite gap. And this one falls in for a base hit. I think this might be a decent time to run as well. There goes Don. Susak lines it. And uh, the timing there just couldn't have been better. I thought that might be a line out. And indeed it was. Paul Blackburn having a decent outing here after giving up a homer to Hayes earlier. It's a 2-1 game. Belted in the left center field, and Don can't get there. Backed up by Bellinger, who will have to save him. That ultimately does not lead to a run. But still, we are down 2-1 here in the seventh inning. Matt Manning still out there. 71 pitches in. Don into right. Down for a hit. And we're going to hold up at first. All right, we're taking away the player lock aspect of this game now. And it's Daniel Susak with two down. 
You can do this, by the way. I don't think you can if your player lock hitter is currently up. I can't do it right now for some reason. I have to wait one more pitch. So if I go to manager and then substitutions, like I can hit right trigger on Susak and now make it a player lock experience with him. But uh, I just hit right trigger on somebody to disable it. So I did the inverse of that. So now I can play out the rest of this one and we'll see if we can take our third straight game from Detroit. Missed away, three and two, they have a rise on deck. Don's gonna leave early. Popped up, a little late there on the cutter. They left Ken Waldachuk in the game for me, trying to keep this a 2-1 ball game. Driven to the gap by Javi Baez, and it'll be extras. Leading off the eighth inning, Baez into second base. Duarte will hit. He had a, a hit on day two. None today. Duarte towards the bullpen. Watch out, bullpen catchers. Line to Guerrero. And did that touch down? I couldn't tell. Yonatan Daza. Man on second to will advance and a rise. That kept the run from scoring there, possibly. Just not letting that get into the outfield. Yeah, you don't want him in for this one, though. We're going to put in Alex Reyes. At the knees, strike one. Ooh, curveball caught a little too much of the plate that time, but fouled off. Hit it weakly. It's Sweeney. On to the bottom of the eighth we go. One, two, three up here for the A's. And we'll see. Yeah, Tyler Alexander, another lefty, man. I have not gotten a Luis Arise at bat today against the right-handed pitcher. Arise is 0 for 2. 4 for 7 in his career against Tyler Alexander. Ah. Grounded softly up to second base. Arise hustling, but he is out. Oh, come on. I took that one, showed some discipline. It's called a strike anyway. Tyler Anderson pitching pretty well. Good change up for strike two. He's nailed the corners in these at-bats. One and two now. And on the ground. Again, he kept that one in a really tough spot to hit. Waiting for him to miss. And they're not going to let it happen against Vladimir Guerrero. They're going to put in Ken Willis. All right, nice time for a change there. Vladdy, great start to his time in Oakland. 2-1 game. Count from Willis is 2-1. Missed up. Seth Brown on deck. Fouled off. Change up did go low. And a line drive. Base hit center field. On a slider away. That's a hard one to time up like that. Now, do we bring in a pinch runner? We do have some speed we can bring into the game. And I think we've got to go for it here. Vladimir Guerrero is going to exit. And Seth Brown will try to get Air Nyes a chance to run. Fouled off a good change up, and it's two strikes on Seth Brown. Air Nyes goes. Fouled back. Two and two now to Seth Brown. Ernais goes again. It's in the dirt. Ernais safe at second base. A base hit could get the job done. Three two from Ken Willis. Miss low. Two aboard for Oakland. Here comes Cody Bellinger. 
Had some big hits on the second day of the year. One more could tie this up. Line drive, left field! Bellinger delivers! Brown to third! He'll be held there, but the game is tied! On an RBI double from Cody Bellinger! Two in scoring position now. As we hope this rally can continue, we'll face Eduardo Rodriguez, and it's Nick Gordon. Collected his first hit today, but he has had his struggles. I'm going to bring in Josh Baez. They brought in a lefty to face a lefty, and we're going to answer. Josh Baez with a chance to deliver a go-ahead hit. Grounded foul on one pitch. Just the way he was getting outs in the first game. But now it's a different story going into the ninth tied as opposed to trailing by one. Alex Reyes will stay in to face Rizzo. And he falls behind him three and one. Ah, oh, what do you think happens to lead off walks in the ninth inning, everybody? Seen this a thousand times. Abraham Toro's gonna run. Reyes not appearing sharp at all in this outing. This has been ugly. Lined into right. Baez had a late break on it and just missed sending it to the wall or allowing it to go there. So the first two reach here for Detroit. And now you're looking at a likely bunt for Urias. And he gets it down. We'll get the sure thing. Yeah, we're going to take Reyes out. This hasn't really been a, a strong outing for him. And I'm going to put in Victor Gonzalez. He picked up 31 strikeouts last year in 39 innings. It was a very good reliever for us. And we're hoping he can get us a big strikeout here. Popped up is even better. Soderstrom makes the play. Two down. Okay, give me one more out. We got Baez on deck. I'd rather face young lefty lefty. What's his clutch? 49? Yeah, this is, this is who we want to pitch to. Fouled off and two strikes. One and two. Held back. Susak calling for a sinker low. Miss low, and it's three and two with Baez awaiting. Hoping to avoid giving him a chance. Off the plate, and Baez will hit. Base is loaded. Javi came through with a double previously. Big cut, strike one. And at the knees, strike two. We have some pitches to work with. On the ground, they're nice. On the throw, got him. We pitch around the two leadoff base runners. And now a chance to walk it off. We'll face the lefty Eduardo Rodriguez with Trey Sweeney. That's in there. It was risky taking Vladdy out to give us a better chance at tying the game, but that's now where we are. Another righty is out of the game. I've considered, you know, moving Ernais to short and then pinch hitting uh, Geloff here, but I like Sweeney. One and, two. and he hooks it over first base and dumps it in right field. That's one way to get it done. Trey Sweeney aboard, representing the winning run. And that brings us to Aaron Don. Playing in just his third career game. He's two for three on the day. Don popped up. Wow. We're going to bring someone off the bench now. Shea Langoliers will hit for Daniel Susak. If they're going to keep throwing lefties at us, we have to counter with the best we have. And Langoliers does have some power. And he lines it up the middle base hit. Sweeney to second. 
Two on, one away, as the lineup turns over and it's Arise. Wait, Arise wasn't leading off, was he? He was, okay. For some reason, I thought Gordon might have been. Two on, one down. Low taken, ball one. Oh, got me to chase that one. And then the hesitation from Shea, but Arise beats out the throw. And now with two down, we just need a hit. Tyler Soderstrom is the batter. I would intentionally walk him if I were them to face their nice. Maybe they'll pitch around him. That's a way. Ball two. Clip the outside for strike two on Soderstrom. Hooked it. Just foul. Wow, we got away with one there. I thought it was going to drift outside further. Three and two. Arise will go. Grounded. Right side. Leaped over by Arise and the play made. As we will have our first extra inning game of the season. And we're going to have Acevedo out there. Langoliers behind the plate. And I think I want to make a defensive... Uh, Adjustment. I'm going to swap Ernais and Sweeney. Just makes more sense to have Ernais play short. So, Ghost Runner activated. Pedro Duarte leads off. We got Acevedo in here. I didn't want to have a lefty. As Duarte gets it past Ernais and a run will score. And, ooh, bunted to Soderstrom. We got that. Yeah, Daza has like 99 hitting against lefties, which I guess clutch is what really matters there. Into center now, and Bellinger has a play as routine as it gets. You expect to get the one here in extra innings. If we can limit him there, we'll see what the... Future holds for us, but now Vladimir Guerrero would originally been the one leading off the 10th inning. And now he's obviously out of the game. 2-2. Two -two. Fouled off. Full count on Toro. And he chops it for a rise. Got it at first. So can we get our one? Pedro Duarte drove home the go-ahead run. And... Who do we have now at, uh, that's Soderstrom. That's enough speed, I'd say, there. 62. But Ernais, his bat is different than the bat of Guerrero. Trying to show that he can stay on this big league squad for more than a year. Ernais grounds it right side and will advance Soderstrom. Nearly snuck it through. Seth Brown will try to bring him home. Had other plans. He was thinking about bringing himself home on that one. Very critical at bat here for Seth. Two and two. Strike three on a good curveball away. They've had some really good two strike pitches. And that leaves it all up to Cody Bellinger. Who's the reason we got to go to extras in the first place. Big cut strike one. Ooh, that one gets called oftentimes. You can also do some damage on that pitch. Two and one. Three and one now. Baez on deck. But it's Bellinger who can really apply the pressure right now. Popped him up. Center cut change up, and he lifts it for Haas, who secures the first Tigers win of the year. And the A's lose a tough one here late. Can't win them all, but we're going to try. Fun game still, but disappointing one with the bats running cold. We're going to go through one more game today, everybody. I want to see if we can take this series from the Tigers. So, the final game, we're going to be player locked. 
with Vladimir Guerrero Jr. 35 homers last year and already a couple on this young season hitting 545. And now a blast to left field. Vladdy out. I thought we might have a double there. Luis Medina gets the start here. And that means Joe Michael is going to open our series against the Twins, making his debut next episode. Vladdy yet third, gathers in and gets Jace Young. Couple strikes here on Guerrero, hitting in the third with nobody on. On the ground, base hit left field. That's the second time today I've gotten the hanging curveball, and we've just gotten a single out of it with him. A walk to Seth Brown puts Vladdy at second base, and now Bellinger. I can't believe I got a perfect changeup with him, had a good swing, and he popped it up for the catcher. That's a weak chopper back to the pitcher, and Joe Plants delivering the throw to first. Now we're bottom of the fifth inning, and Vladdy just continues to hit with uh, two down and bases empty. 3 nothing Detroit. And up and in. I'm not expecting anything to hit in this at-bat. You'd pitch around him in this situation. 3-1. and one. Going the other way. This one's got some carry. And it runs out of gas, shy of the track. Ooh, top of the seventh. Base is juiced here for Detroit, four to one. That's on the ground. Guerrero's gonna make the throw in time. But a three-run game, are we gonna get some of these back? Four to two runners at the corners. Vladimir Guerrero facing Joey Wentz. Ooh, a little aggressive on the first pitch. Trying to do too much. And struck out. Oh, man. Bottom nine, and now it's a four-run game. Two down. Tigers looking to split the first four games here with us. We had a great first two days. And now just having trouble uh, finishing the job here in this series. Guerrero, one for four on the day. And now one for five, closing things out against the Tigers. Good comeback in the series for Detroit as we split the first two. And you know, this year I think part of the goal is to creep closer to 500. And in the first four games, we are 500. Still a lot to like from these first four games. I think that we've got a, a much more potent lineup and an even better pitching staff. I do have to do our scouting. We'll lead with that next episode, but you know whose debut is coming up next. Joe Michael, get ready when we face the Twins. But hey, four games in. Aaron Don is your hit leader. He has eight. And of those eight... Four are extra base hits. He's got a pair of doubles, a pair of triples already. Don with a good start to his major league career. For the pitching side of things, I mean, you can't look into this too deep at this point, but Kyle Muller has uh, had his struggles, it looks like, giving up three runs and two home runs. That's what we like to see right there. Aaron Don leads the league in triples along with Mookie Betts. And that, everybody, is going to bring this episode to an end. Year four is underway. I hope you're excited for this season. And we've gotten one big debut finished today and another one on deck. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all in the next episode very soon. Have a great day.